As we get into the market today, we're talking about the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. We had some pretty interesting movement on this day. Now, into yesterday's close, obviously, a lot of blood. It was basically all over the street, pushing below 1100. We had some pretty interesting news and earnings from Apple as well, and then Amazon. This is ultimately how we decided to move back up, getting a bounce and having one of the better days that we've had over the past two, three months, right? Now, before we get into this, there's a few things we need to talk about specifically going into next week. You will have your interest rate decision on Wednesday, and I want this to be the focal point of essentially this video and the focal point of the most important things happening over the next five days, give or take. This will be the most influential move, in my opinion, on the market. And I've been saying it for a few days that I do see downside. I want to highlight that right now. I, I'm long-term bearish on the market still, but I want to highlight. I've been saying it that I did not see breakthrough until the Fed speaks. I thought possibly earnings could cause this, but even with horrible earnings from every tech company basically that exists except Facebook, no, except Netflix, I'm sorry. You have not pressed down, and that's just the way that it's going right now. Apple alone, in my opinion, is holding this market together. Before Apple's earnings, you were below 1100 and now with Apple's earnings announcing a dividend and some of the other crazy news that we went over yesterday, you're sitting at 11.6. So this is really important to where we're at. We're going to talk about key levels and what to expect going forward. Now, before we get into that, I ask you to do two things, like and subscribe. It helps out the channel so much. And when you come here, you know you're getting an unbiased review on the market. I try to give you as much free content as possible. So if you're not following on Twitter, I recommend doing so as well as so you can get those updates. As long as I can, I always try to put the content out there for you. And again, I'll be live tomorrow as well at noon central, answering questions for you, absolutely free of charge, like I try to do at least every other day here on the market as well. But I have something to let everyone know about as well. Right now, the mentorship program in our channel is open for the next 48 hours. The link will be down below. This is for people that want to put in the work to really understand what we are looking for, me and Jay Reem, every single day to day trade and what we do to be profitable in the market. We're literally going to handhold you along the way, showing you every morning, starting right now, actually, 30 minutes before market, going over what we're looking for, how we're breaking this down, how we're charting. We have live classes once a week as well. We have workshops, trade recaps every single day going over exactly what we're doing. Everyone's getting this broken down as well, breaking down exactly how we're trading and showing you along the way as well. As you can see in here, real profits from traders in the channel as well. Now, going into today, I'm going to tell you right now, before we even go further in the video, I started establishing my short position. Okay, I'm going to go over where that is what I'm looking at with that as well and how I see us moving. But I've started really establishing my longer term position. I have a shorter term position as well. But right now I, I started, you know, going going in there and I'm I'm pretty deep in right now. So as we look at this, we, we're going to look at the NASDAQ and then the ES and you're going to notice some big differences here. One on the NASDAQ, the big level was 1144. It was basically your lows from Monday, Tuesday and most of Wednesday. Yesterday, we broke below and we just had a down day. And then obviously today we broke back above and we've been moving good. Okay, now there's a few focal points you need to be watching going into Wednesday. You have your September lows. This is your September 16th lows right here going all the way till the 21st. You have 11.7.8. We're going to talk about that here in a second. And then you have your early September lows back here at 11.94. Okay, so as we get into this. Basically, where you're quote unquote having a sort of double top, if you will, it's not a double top. I'm just, people are going to call this, have been having a lot of questions about this, is at this 11.7 region. Okay. Now, as we look at this, I want to highlight how you're moving and I want to highlight the basis of the market so you can see it. Yes, the NASDAQ is there and you're bouncing back up. You look good and great. But I want to show you what the other indexes are doing. As we look at ES futures, what's happening here? You've already surpassed that level and you're testing September 20th, September 16th highs back here, right? You're already above September 6th lows. You're already above all these major levels. So you're going to ask yourself, Tyler, what's happening here? What's the difference? What's going on? This, in my opinion, is showing that the S&P and the Dow, which you're going to see here in a second, 
are essentially the strongest parts of the market. And I'm going to just go over my opinion on this overall. And you're coming over to these pretty massive levels and you're just, that's where you're at right now. You're not, you're not getting rejected. You're just there. Next is the Dow. This is the Dow. The Dow is ripping. The Dow is going berserk. It's the strongest thing in the whole market. And if we zoom out entirely to December, this is December. You look great here. Honestly, you look your, you know, you look extremely strong. You look bullish. You look great. Like you could be back to all time highs in no time, right? Go to ES, look here. Not so much. <laughs> Not so much. You're still obviously really bearish and hurting more than Dow. And then on NQ, NQ is pretty similar to ES, but you still are lagging as well. It looks even worse. Okay. As we look here again, just stay with me. Hear me out before we go, you know, before you start going crazy on me. As we look at this, has the Dow been leading the market? This is just, again, my opinion on this. Has the Dow been leading the market? I would say not. Has the ES been leading the market? I would say almost, maybe, possibly, close, close. Has NQ been leading the market? I would have to say yes. It's made lows first. It's been the most dominant. It's been the biggest question mark on the economy with primarily tech being in this index. This is where I have to focus right now. And I know this could be this may sound biased, but again, I'm not being biased personally. I believe tech is the biggest question mark. And as we look at these past tech earnings, they're decelerating growth, right? The biggest company, the company that's actually driving and holding the market up, we could argue right now, Apple, the biggest chunk of ES and S&P futures, right? predominantly the big factor there announced that their growth will drastically slow in the next quarter holiday sales will go down even though their demand is sky high right now apparently holiday growth is going to be bad okay so it doesn't make sense to me but it is what it is okay this is where i'm looking at this is what i'm eyeballing right now what is the common denominator and what's going on between all these indexes if we look Dow has had the best earnings. Every Dow stock, Caterpillar, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, RTX, they're killing it. They're destroying energy companies, oil, gas. They're all doing great. Smashing. ES, it's mixed. Your tech earnings, Microsoft, Facebook. I'm not going to consider Amazon. Amazon is a tech company if you really think about it. And then, you know, anything in between, the big ones, are for the most part getting slapped. Okay, Netflix was the big beat. Besides them, everyone's done horrible, horrendous. If we look at Amazon, you're in the trenches. If we look at Microsoft, you're pretty low. You made new 52-week lows this past week. This is the concern, right? This is or on for last Friday, I'm sorry, last Thursday. So th that is the concern for me. Now, NQ, again, you are bouncing, but you have to realize you're bouncing slower and you're moving not as strong as the others. So that's where I'm looking at this. And I think that tech will have the biggest impact on the market because the overall growth of America, in my opinion, relies on tech companies, okay? I'm sorry, we're not in the 1900s. It's not about railroads. It's not about, you know, the, <laughs> I don't know. It's not, this is not the 1900s. I think tech is the most influential part of our growth. That's my personal opinion. So where I started establishing my position for myself is I started getting 360 puts for January, 2023, on Qs, and then I also got some November 18ths, which are a little bit riskier. Those are down right now. I'm gonna be transparent. I'm down about, I think, like 500 on the Novembers and then like $40 on the uh, Januaries. And that's just because I bought those later in the day as well. So I wanna be really clear. Those are my two positions right now. But as you look at this, I don't believe you're out of the woodworks. I still think you have a lot of pain. I still think you, you could see this go bad. And I want to address where you're at right now. You're definitely coming to the top of this supply as well, right? On the daily time frame, if we look here, there's no coincidence as we zoom in here. You are at the top of this supply now. Congratulations. You've hit it, right? This is your supply. This is your resistance, right? You're there. You're reaching the top of it now. It's funny. It's happening in the after hours. That's where we're at. We're still moving up into the end of the market. And in my opinion, I still solely believe you're bearish here. I don't believe there's been a Fed pivot. If we come out Wednesday and they announce there's been a pivot and they're going to slow down rates, then maybe I believe it. May I, maybe I just say, okay, we got to take what we do, scrap it. We'll go back to bullish. You know, it is what it is. I, I've been bearish. I've been bullish. It's been both ways, guys. We trade what the market gives us. But as of right now, I have to look at the writing on the wall and position myself for potential downside. 
That's how I'm looking at this right now. That's how I'm trading. Now, again, this could get in. Before I go any further, I want to give a special shout out to Hanka Trade. This is who I am currently using when I'm trading futures in the after hours or anything like that. You already know where I do my Bitcoin trading, and now this is where I do my future trading using Bitcoin as well. You can trade the NAS and the SPX basically 24-5 using their platform. And when you're looking at account types to be using, the one I'm using is going to be the ECN Plus. I'll explain why, because I'm going to be doing a $1,000 challenge here on the channel, as well as most likely the new channel as well. So you can follow me along using the platform, learn how to use it as well, if you're interested in using anything like this and just so you know they are also running a bonus giving you a hundred percent deposit bonus on whatever you're using you can always withdraw your initial deposit but you need to look at the actual rules for depositing the hundred percent bonus when you are trading it because there are certain rules that apply as well but they have a lot of promotions going on so i would definitely be checking them out right now because this is how you can trade some of the futures that i'm talking about here in the video validated if nq right here i want to talk about this if nq starts getting above 11.7 11 8 right here. I believe you're looking for upside, most likely to 12,000. Okay. We're really clear about that. ES, you start getting above 3940. I think you have a lot more upside. Your next point of upside for me on the daily time frame, it, it, there's, there's a lot. It's almost, it's close to 4250 people. There's a lot of potential. You could argue down to 4120 right here, but there's still tons of room to run. If you start breaking over this region here, that's what I'm looking at there. Now, I'm going to do a really quick dive to some of the fundamentals as well. And actually, before we get into that, I'm going to show you some of the order flow as well so you can see this. This is, this is just SPY. This is Q's. SPY. End of the day, big orders. More and more orders are flowing in, and look what they're flowing into. Are they flowing in for next week? Are they flowing in for the week after? No, they're not scalps, people. These are big boy positions. These are dated. And the majority of them, again, we talked about October 1st. Remember, we talked about the October chain. We made our first round of money there. Second, we traded in November's. We made more money. Now it's moving into December's. Follow the money. And that's where we're seeing a lot of these November or December's. And then now they're coming into January as well. We'll look at that chain here in a second as well. So that's the big question. And you're seeing a lot of money flowing into these. Going into queues, same story. A lot of money flowing in here. A lot more money in my opinion as well. You're seeing even more data positions. But overall, these are really aggressive, in my opinion, coming in specifically for, you know, December for 300s in the 450s deep in the money. But that's a very aggressive sign of big selling as well there. So that's my concern. Going into VIX, you're still seeing now that people are expecting this to start popping back up. And again, I talked about this with VIX yesterday. It's not bad for me to see VIX coming down. And I ultimately wanted to see near the $24, $25 level, right? I, I mentioned this. And you're you're getting back in that range, right? If you highlight this twenty-four to twenty-five dollar level, look at how often we bounce from this region, right? Just highlighting, right? Coming down to twenty-four locally, twenty-three point five roughly. This is where we've had a lot of big bounces. This has been a very influential point on VIX for moving up, breaking out for that potential downside, and that's where we're at right now. Going into the dollar, you started to see a decent bounce from our levels, right? I highlight, highlighted this on Twitter. I highlighted this yesterday's video. This was our daily range, our daily support down here. I don't think this breaks easy. If this breaks, I think you have potential to really start ripping to the upside as well. So there's indicators that I'm watching for to flip to the bullish thesis, okay? I am not saying you cannot turn bullish, but as of right now, I have to remain bearish based on what the market is showing me and based on my indicators, okay? It's just my opinion, what I'm doing. I'll show my losses if I lose. I don't mind. I don't like to show my gains because I think it gives the wrong viewpoint here, but I don't mind showing my losses so people can understand and at least have a sense of trust when you come here on the channel, right? So as you look at this, you are bouncing as well, but I want to mention on the daily, you did get rejected so far at that 10.8 region, okay? Come back to the 15 minute, you can see here as well. You tried to hold here and you kind of came back down. Next thing, the yields. And I just want to show you that where the yields are at right now. Yields are now back above that 4% region. Again, what I say yesterday, I said the fact that you broke below was pretty, that was looking bullish, right? The fact that you were breaking down. But now you're back above the 4% level. This is a major cause for concern. Again, this is, yields are sitting at 4%. That's a red flag, people. Again, you have not held back with these regions since all the way back on the, you know, 10-year yields since 2011. Back into 2009, 2008 was when you really held those levels, right? So I want to highlight that. The 30-year, 
you're still holding that level as well. So these are big concerns overall. The inversion, we went over this yesterday also. I mentioned, I expect to start seeing bounces soon, and you are bouncing a little bit. You have a little bit more room for downside, but you are bouncing so far, okay? This is the inversion on the 10 and 30 year. In my opinion, the biggest sign of a recession, inflation, major concerns is this chart right here. Again, coming back into this, just remembering you, not a recession. I just have that there. I'm sorry. But I've gone over this so much, I don't want to cover it today. Going back to 2018, we had a big dip. The housing bubble, dot-com bubble. These are all the times you've inverted, right? And you're sitting there and you're trending there now, and I just don't believe you're done yet, okay? So I want to highlight that, make sure everyone sees that. Big cause for concern, what I'm looking at there. Junk bonds, haven't looked at them in a while, but I do want to highlight junk bonds have gone pretty wild. Junk bonds have popped up above your June and July lows. You are moving up. You're in tangent with that September level where you are, and it's very much following the ES and not the NASDAQ here. So I do want to highlight that. So junk bonds, you are ripping up. They have been going just literally parabolic, gapping up every single day. So keep that on your radar. If these are getting back below this, it would be a big sign of concern. But right now, it is worth mentioning where you are at. You're sitting at that level once again right here. And I don't even argue it's about right there. So that's where I want to highlight as well. Okay, that's what I'm looking at on the market. That's my big concerns. Overall, everything that I see there. If you have questions, comment down below. I'd love to answer those. Now, into next week, you also have earnings. Okay, Tuesday, we have AMD. So far, I'm not too worried about Uber. I think they missed bad. Roku, I think they missed bad. PayPal, I think they missed personally. And I think you have Square as well. I believe the earnings coming out now, if I was thinking there was a possibility for upside on other earnings, I don't think there's too big of a possibility for earnings <laughs> to the upside going into the rest of these, personally. Okay? They don't look great. AMD is the biggest riding on the wall, but I want to highlight as well what some big money was doing here on NVIDIA near the end of the day. This is, in my opinion, one big investor buying only for January 20th, okay? Tons of puts deep in the money. This person, in my opinion, is very bearish. He may be hedging, don't get me wrong, but overall, if you go look at that chain, it's, it's really, really bearish. So that's my opinion there. Big cause for concern. Earnings, it could go either way. Again, earnings, we never really know. But I do want to highlight that semiconductors, big part of the economy, a lot of issues with China. I just don't think they're cleared up yet. Maybe they are. We'll go over that more next week as well. So that's what I'm looking at there going into book map also. Looking here. This was your big inflection point, the $3,900 level on ES. And this is kind of what I focused on in Discord when I started grabbing my puts. So you got rejected and then you broke through and you ended up running up to like 39, 20, 30. Yeah, roughly where you're at right now. Really interesting behavior. You started getting some calls, some not calls, some buying on the hidden order book dark pools. Interesting to see. That was bullish there at the end of the day. So I want to highlight this. It's not all bad. You do have some good notes in here as well, right? So this was interesting behavior also. I'm interested to see how we come out Monday morning because we have some mixed signals here. We have some dark pull to the upside. But again, when we look at where we're at, I think you have to have cause for concern here on a broad market. This is my opinion. What I'm looking at, again, if you have questions, I would love to answer them. I'll most likely have a live tomorrow around 12 central so noon central time i'll be live here on the channel if you want to catch me ask me questions live we'll be going over the charts so i'll be able to go over that as well again have a good one traders